In this video, I'm going to look at the ionic product of water, Kw. So we're going to start by saying that all aqueous solutions contain H plus ions and OH minus ions. And that comes from the partial dissociation of water. So obviously all aqueous solutions contain water and this will partially ionize into those two ions. So they are both present in an aqueous solution. So for an aqueous solution to be acidic, the hydrogen ion concentration must be greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. For a solution to be alkaline, it's the other way around. The hydroxide ion concentration greater than the H plus concentration. And obviously, if a solution is neutral, the two ion concentrations are the same. So we're going to go back to that partial dissociation of water now. And you can see written up there, for every 500 million water molecules, only one dissociates. So it's safe to say that this equilibrium is very much on the left hand side. Because it's an equilibrium, we can write an expression for the equilibrium constant for this process. And I'm sure you'll all agree that that's going to be it there. So it's the concentrations at equilibrium of the products over the reactant. Slight rearrangement would give us that. And if we think back to this point here, for every 500 million, only one dissociates we can safely say that the concentration of water is huge in comparison to these two. And so we're going to treat the concentration of water as effectively being constant. Now, what that's going to allow us to do is effectively say we've got two constants multiplied together. And when you get two constants multiplying each other, you always create a new constant. So in the case of water, we get the new constant Kw, which we would call the ionic product of water. Now, if you remember, equilibrium constants are affected by changes in temperature. So the value quoted is at 298 Kelvin. And Kw, ionic product of water, has a value of 1 times 10 to the negative 14 moles squared dm to the minus 6. And the units, basically you're squaring moles per decimeter cubed. And so you get those units. So we'll just use Kw to prove some things we take for granted about pure water. And so the most obvious thing is, why is the pH of pure water at 298 Kelvin 7? So we'll just do a quick Kc type um, calculation now. So the initial uh, concentration of water, let's say, is A. So that means initially we have a zero concentration for H plus and OH minus. And let's say at equilibrium, um, X dissociates. Remember for every 500 million that X would be 1. So that would be A minus X. And that would be X. And that would be X. We've just found out that the Kw, we can write the dissociation of water as Kw equals H plus concentration times OH minus concentration. And because we're doing this at 298 Kelvin, we know that the value for that would be 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Because these two concentrations are always the same, because of the way this dissociation takes place, we can simplify this to the concentration of H plus squared is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And remember, if we want to calculate the pH of anything, so it's water in this case, we need to know what the concentration of H plus is, so we can then minus log it. So what do we do? We're going to have to square root 1 times 10 to the minus 14, and that's going to be the concentration of H plus. So that comes out at 1 times 10 to the minus 7 for the concentration of H plus. And when you minus log that, you get a pH of 7. 
So we'll just finish by looking at what temperature will do to this dissociation. So statement, the dissociation of water is endothermic. So there it is again. We've got a positive delta H. So what does that mean? If you increase the temperature, an increase in temperature always favours the endothermic direction. So temperature increase will make this dissociation occur more to the right. And therefore, what will that do to Kw? Well, it's going to give us more of these than this, than we had at the lower temperature. So Kw is going to increase. So if you want, you can have a go at this calculation that I've put up there in purple. At 3 to 1 Kelvin, so that's a higher temperature, we've got Kw increased to 4 times 10 to the minus 14, mole squared d to the minus 6. Have a go at calculating the pH of water at that temperature. So we'll just quickly run through the calculation now. The hydrogen ion concentration squared will be 4 times 10 to the minus 14. So that's the Kw value at this temperature. You can see what I've done there. I've just automatically remembered that these are always the same. So I've combined the two and just put the squared term in. Square root of 4 times 10 to the minus 14 is going to give us the H plus concentration. So that comes out of 2 times 10 to the minus 7. And then I'm going to minus log that to get the pH and it comes out at 6.7. So at 321 Kelvin, the pH of water is actually a little bit less than seven. But water is still neutral. So can you think why? And of course it comes down to the fact that for a solution to be neutral, the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. And if we think about the dissociation of pure water, these will always be the same. So it doesn't matter what the temperature is, the pH, yes, the pH changes, but these are always the same.